Hello and welcome to Healthy Knitting. My name is Rosie. It is March 9th, 2014, and here we are, number three. <laughs> um, I re let me let me just welcome everybody. Thank you for coming to the show. You can find me on Ravelry as L E S P E T I T S L U X E S. There is a Ravelry group over there called Healthy Knitting. Knitting. Please come join us and have some fun in the conversations. And there is a blog at wordpresshealthyknitting.com, however that goes. I don't even know because I never have to type it in. Um, I recorded a whole episode that was over an hour long and unfortunately, um, movie stopped working on my Mac and didn't save it. So I'm doing it all over again. Now the light at 6 p.m. Uh, it's daylight savings time, so it's kind of really five, but at six normally, we would have no more daylight, really, and I realized that when I started over that you, I'm shifting around the chair even more because the sun's setting over there, but then it started to get really dark and I had to go get a light and bring a light in here, so hopefully we can get through this okay. I don't really have any time Monday to do this. My week is full, and it's already taken me three weeks to... Sorry, the cat is doing something weird. To um, get this done, if I don't do it on a weekend, I don't have time during the week to do this. So let's get going. What's new and good? What's new and good is I'm going to try not to sound like an infomercial, but I bought a Nitro Bullet. I posted that on the... Um, sorry, somebody's texting me. <laughs> it's like all day today, and then things are quiet and then all of a sudden I'm recording it's like ding 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 ding. Anyway, I bought the Nitro Bullet, the large one. They have two other sizes, a smaller one that is about the size of this container and then one that is about the size of that liquid that comes through there. I decided to get the big one because I felt that it was able to do more with a big one than with just the small one and it, the price really wasn't that much different. You had a couple extra things in here that you didn't in the other one, and so that's the one I went with. And I've been having green drinks every day. They're really, really good. I actually, I've only made one that was kind of weird, but I, you know, I'm having fun just picking randomly the vegetables in my refrigerator, and it's coming out really nice. So I'm excited about that. And when I moved here, the chair sticks on the wood underneath, and I can't slide very easily. <laughs> So out of sorts I'm so you know it was an hour guys a whole hour and then I listened to almost all of it to make sure I didn't say anything really wrong and then the whole thing disappeared so my Sunday has been totally dedicated to all of you love you guys <laughs> um, and so the other thing I did this week was I watched this movie named can you see it it's called trashed so the light still isn't all that good um, by Jeremy Irons and I have taken this out from my local library and there's another one called Trash which I need to go pick up tomorrow and I don't know the author of that offhand but it's a newer version I don't know if it's the same guy just a different timeline or updated I really have no idea all I know is there's two movies named Trash and I need to, to watch them I highly recommend this Really, uh, it's something we all, I think everybody on the planet needs to see because there's a lot you don't know about. I'm like really up on environmental stuff. I did not know a lot of this stuff. So it's really, really informative um, and it will get you engaged with your community or even just start at home and then get engaged with your community. But it's really, I highly recommend that this um, movie and so I had a very busy week uh, last weekend. My, I think it was last weekend, or was it the weekend before? I think it was the weekend before my cousins came, and we had so much fun. It was just nonstop laughter for hours. They came over to Beacon. We went to the Hop. You've heard me talk about that place before, my favorite, and also Dogwood, and walked around through Beacon a little bit. Um, it was very fun. I have the most wonderful family ever, and they're just... You know, it's really fun to let loose and just laugh all night long. So that's what we did, and we had a blast. And I laughed a lot yesterday, too, because yesterday was Second Saturday in Beacon. And what that is is the shops stay open late, galleries are open, openings for artists happen. And my pastel teacher had her opening 
over at Riverwinds, and a lot of my friends actually have their art. Oh, here comes Buddy. Have their art over at Riverwinds, and it's a gallery. Um, they have many things in there. They have art, as in like pictures, photography, painted works, uh, wool. There are hand dyers that that have wool in there. Um, jewelry. My friends make jewelry. Um, there's pottery. Uh, it's just really, it's a nice store. There's a lot of different things in there to look at. And um, so anyway, my pastel teacher had a show and I told you I went to go see her show at her house, but these, not all of these works were there. She had taken a trip, I think to Ireland and probably took some really good photographs and did some work when she came home as well as the work that she did while she was there. They are amazing. They really are. I, I, my other pastel teacher also does amazing landscapes. This is difficult for me to do landscapes, so I really want to learn how to um, how to make those. And they just elude me a little. So I've taken out some more books, but I'm also going to take some more classes and practice. And which is one of the other things I did was I made that. Um, that's a pastel. Um, I'm off screen. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Um, I did that one. And I did a couple other ones. They didn't come out like I would like them. I didn't like the paper I was using, but I like the paper on this one too. This is a night scene. It's not really a landscape, but I did it on black paper and just had a little bit of fun. I really enjoy painting and it makes me really happy. And it's just another way for me to be creative. Whereas when I knit, I'm creative only when I feel like I'm actually making up the pattern. I just feel like I'm, you know, kind of like, following directions when I um, follow pattern. So it's a different type of creativity that I get when I actually paint. So I like the differences and I enjoy them a lot. Um, what else? Oh, my taxes are getting done. Yay. And I'm not doing them. <laughs> it's the first time in years. I have always done my taxes and I've always dreaded it every year. And finally, I'm like, I'm leaving soon. I am not dealing with this. Someone else needs to do it because I will wait till last second. I'm like be boarding on the plane, like hitting send on my taxes. I know it. So I was like, no, I'm not doing that this year. So that's good. And the other good thing is that we didn't get any snow last week because now you couldn't see it before, but you can see, see all that white out there. That's all snow. Still, we have this much snow on the ground. Still, still for New York. That's really unheard of because normally it snows, it melts, it snows, it melts. It doesn't really stick around, but it's been really, really cold. <laughs> and the crazy thing I did last Thursday when I was at knitting, I was like, um, I was just checking the weather to see what was gonna happen. And I have like, I don't know, eight places that I check. So when I opened it up, it wasn't actually Newburgh, and I thought that it was. <laughs> no, it was where I'm going. It was in Como, and I was like, oh my God, this week's gonna be great. It's gonna be in the 60s, it's awesome. And then I looked at the place, and I'm like, oh, God, it's not here. And I won't be there for another three weeks. So I'm leaving on the 30th of um, March. Right on the 31st. I'll leave on the 30th of April. I'll be home. Hopefully I can podcast. I really don't know what's going to happen with the Internet when I get over there. This eats up a lot of um, data sending. So unless I can get live streaming somewhere, I probably won't be able to. Or maybe I can just do smaller ones and just do little snippets because I don't really know how much knitting I'm going to get done while I'm over there anyway. Um, I am going to bring knitting, but, you know, I just don't know what's going to happen. So I don't even know what's going to happen here. I have not been knitting, you guys. It's really been kind of crazy. So I'll talk about that in a second. I think I'm going to sneeze. Nope. Okay. All right. So that's new and good. I think that's quicker than last time, too. Huh? All right, so on the needles, off the needles. Both of these hats are done. This is the cashmere ribbed hat. These are not made in cashmere. This is actually uh, Ella Ray Mer Merino, lace merino worsted in a various colorway that I do not know. And I like these hats. These are going for Halos for Hope, which I hope is still available. <laughs> I think that it is. And so there's two hats for charity. I only have a little bit of yarn left over, which is good. I really wanted to use it all. One of them is a tiny bit shorter than the other one. I didn't realize that, but unless I'm doing top down, it's kind of hard to tell, right? How much I'm going to have left. I would hate to not be able to finish the hat, so I just cut it close. So 
that, and I think I did those on, I don't even know what size needle, sevens or eights or something like that. This is the actual hat pattern. And you can see that Jessica K cashmere ribbed hat, super easy pattern, free on Ravelry. And it didn't use up too much yarn. Okay, so let me put that over there. No, I'm not gonna put that over there because buddy, I don't have any room now because now I don't have any place to put anything. Hang on. Okay, so the other thing I've been knitting on is something that I can't wear, which is great because you all know the disasters I've been having with the projects that I've been making that actually needed to have the gauge correct or have something fit right. I made bunny rabbits. Aren't they cute? <laughs> You're like, they don't look like bunny rabbits. Well, they don't because they're they're not felted yet. And then I think you stuff them a little bit. So this is the head, these are the ears. It's a cute pattern, it's free on Ravelry. I'm gonna show it to you in a second. And the little body. And you can make these in various sizes and with various sizes of um, weight yarn so that you can have different ones. So I'm just having a parade of all the same weight yarn they're almost all the same. These four are the same yarn, and it's the yarn by Kristen Nicholas, who has all that beautiful color work and um, colored patterns. I don't have any of her books, but they're stunning. And she has her own line of yarn called Julia. I'll show that to you in a second. So I have four of those. <laughs> Nashua hand knits, Julia. And then I made one more in, oh, you're not even gonna be able to see the color, for heaven's sake. I'm sorry, I really did do this earlier today when the light was great. That's coming out a lot more dark blue, forest green than it is. It's a lot lighter green. Now you can't see anything. Holy cow, I'm sorry. But I don't have time to do this tomorrow, so. It's either now or you're going to wait another week. And that is Knit One Crochet 2 Camelino. This is Merino 90 and 10 Camel. And Nashua Hand Knits is 50 wool, 25 alpaca, and 25 mohair. I'm sorry, and I am just so itchy. Stuff's flying. Um, I can't even remember what size needles I did these on. And believe it or not, I didn't even put it in Ravelry. I've only put one project in and I think I only put that I started it and finished it and that I didn't even put a needle size. They're either sevens or nines. Nines would make more sense because you'd want them looser, but I don't even remember now. They could be sevens. <laughs> this is what it's been like for me lately. These only take an hour and a half to make. Oh, let me show you the pattern because they're, they're even super cute. Once you felt them, you get to put the little whiskers and face on them and everything. And I encourage you to go over there and look at some of them because they're, they just make you smile. They're going to be for my, my great niece. Aren't they just the cutest little things? Look at the little happy bunnies. So she'll have a parade of bunnies and then it's by Christine Manitz, if I'm saying that correctly. I have this much yarn left over, which I'm thinking... I can't really see how good that the colors look so cute together. I thought, wouldn't it be fun to make um, like a little color work egg or something like that? A couple of them, because obviously there's a lot. And I don't even know if I'll get to that before Easter. But it, I could make it and just give it at any point in time. But little eggs or something would be really cute, right? Um, the colors go really nice. The Julia colors, obviously, because Kristen knows what she's doing. And then I'll try to bring the light over here. Maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know what to do. Hang on. Yeah, I feel like I'm being glared at. I'm sorry, natural daylight is much easier, but it's just not working. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, so that's all I did for knitting. So if you only came to talk about knitting, I'm sorry, that's it. I didn't do any spinning either. It's been really, really, really busy. And a lot of the stuff, I mean, I did those, um, rabbits when I was at knitting and I didn't really um, knit very much. And like I said, an hour, they used an hour and a half each. There's five of them. That's all the knitting I've done in three weeks. And I think part of the hat. Bad, 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 bad. Um, okay, so that's it for that. Oh, you know what? If, you, if you're interested in knitting books, I have a knitting book I'm going, I'm going to review. And then after that, it's all health stuff. So I think we're moving along faster than last time. Okay, anyway, this is Star... Scarf. <laughs> can't speak. Scarf Style 2 by Pam Allen. 
and you're probably not going to be able to see this. I'm going to be really upset with the light. Okay. Can you see that? I'm going to get really, I'm, I'm going to try not to get upset right now because everything was so good before. You can see everything. The light was good. Let's just see if we can get in here and we have a little bit better light. Oh, on the wrong side. Okay, so this is Queenie. And basically, it has a nice cable texture on the bottom and fair L around the middle. And I was wondering if it would be better to actually have had it in reverse. But I kind of do like the way the, the fair Isle is on next to her face. But it seems like you do all that work and then you're not even going to be able to see it. But I do like that. I have quite a few tabs in here and not everything I would make, but they're interesting to me, like this one. Oh, you know what? I feel like I should just not do this and do it on Monday. I don't have time Monday. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll re review the book another day, but I took it out from the library. You can't see it. All right. You know what? I'm going to... I'll do the review tomorrow and just post that by itself because you can't see it and there's no point in me putting that out there if you can't even see it and I'm getting frustrated. So let's just talk about um, health stuff, okay? All right, so let me think. What I did, one of the reasons, okay. I'm sorry, this is just what happens when you, when you do this and it didn't come out right and now you have to redo it and the light's bad and everything. I'm getting really frustrated. Okay, I made almond milk. Let me just get that out of the way and I'm gonna give you the recipe for how to make almond milk. And the prep precipice for me making almond milk is that if you ever go to the store and you see almond milk, read the ingredients. It's full of sugar, it's full of um, gargum and carrageenan gum and natural flavor, which is something you really don't want to drink. Um, and God knows, like, you don't know what water source they're using either. So if you make it yourself or the, you know, organic almonds, whatever. So you can make it yourself. And we've talked about almonds before. If you want, uh, non pasteurized organic almonds, you can get them, but you have to buy them online. You can buy organic almonds in the stores and they may not be irradiated, but they may be steam pasteurized. So they're still going through that pathogen cleansing heat or radiation. So you definitely want to stick away, stay away from the irradiated ones. Um, steam processing, you know, it's the lesser of the, the bad. Um, if you're looking for a, a completely raw product, they are not once they've reached that amount of heat. So you can get them online. These are not those. I bought these at my uh, little nature's pantry store and they're just plain old raw organic, raw organic <laughs> uh, almonds. So basically to make this much, which is two cups of almond milk, and there's a little bit of settling in there and there's a little bit of, you can see a little bit of the, um, the skins. I didn't take the skins off. I use a half a cup of dried almonds. This is a half cup container. This is the, the stuff that's left over. Um, you fill this with almonds and then you use one cup of water and you soak the almonds for eight hours in that water. They puff up to be the size of one cup. So you, it works out really good. You get them all nice and juicy to begin with. And then once they've um, plumped up, you drain them and then stick them into your blender. You can use a Vitamix. You can try a food processor. I don't know how well it's going to uh, smash everything up, but give it a try. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? It could blow up like it did on me once with a different type of machine. Not my food processor, but a different one. <laughs> that was almond milk everywhere. So, um, so you can give it a try and see what happens. The other thing you're going to need is a strainer. Darn not in here. I will post a picture of the strainer because I'm not going to get up and go to the kitchen and get it because I'm just not. 
So anyway, take the one cup of almonds and they were soaked in filtered, clean, pure water. Put them into your blender, mixer, whatever you're going to use with two more cups of clean, pure water. Blend until you've blended it so that there's nothing left to it, pretty much. It's pretty pulpy. Then I put it in my strainer and it, I use a wire mesh strainer. You can use a bag, a muslin bag, but you know what? I found that is just annoying. It's one more thing that I have to wash that's gonna have to like really be washed carefully and I would rather just use a stainless steel strainer at this point. Put it over a bowl and pour it in and just work it through with a spoon to mash through the rest of the pulp. And this is what I had left, this amount. And I was considering, I'm not going to now, but I was, because it's been left out. <laughs> I had a call after my thing blew up and then I've been on the phone for a while and I haven't had, it, so it hasn't been in the refrigerator. And I don't want to just leave it out and then try to drink this. I don't know if it'll be bad or not. So anyway, I was going to re-put it in with another cup of water and see if I got any more almond milk out of it. This I'm just going to give to the birds. So you might actually be able to get two sets of almond milk, maybe, from a half a cup of almonds. And that would be almost three cups. And that's really cheap compared to the stuff at the store. Um, not only does it cost less and it doesn't take that much time to make, but it's fresh. Um, you control over the type of almonds that are used because you don't when you when you've bought it in a in a container it comes in a container which is bad for the environment um, so check out that movie <laughs> and the the container type of container may actually be um, not beneficial for you either because if it's a plastic container the plastics can leach into your body if it's one of those lined things the lining could be chemicals could be leaching into your body you don't need artificial flavors you don't need natural flavors because they're not really natural that's just a way for the um, companies to get away with saying not saying what really is so it's a win-win for everybody if you make your own almond milk it's not sweet so I'm just telling you that right now it does not taste like the stuff actually I've never had the stuff in the store <laughs> so but I, when I tasted it I was like wow this is definitely not a sweet beverage and you can kind of see it separated a little bit the heavy stuff is sunk down to the bottom and the lighter stuff is on the top I imagine if you wanted to have it even cleaner, you can use a finer mesh um, type sieve to get the, the brown pieces of the covering off, or you can take the covering off beforehand. I don't think it's necessary. It's just added fiber and I'm not concerned about it. I'm going to actually make um, pudding with this. I'm not a big dessert person either, but I thought it'd be kind of fun because I've been playing around with chia seeds and we're gonna talk about that in a minute too. So, that's it for almond milk. It's pretty easy, right? And I mean, seriously, fresh almond milk is so much better than the stuff in the store. All right, so let's talk about chia seeds. Oh, did I tell you? We're not going to talk about meditation. We're going to do that next week. Um, I'm not prepared. I've been playing with this thing, and I wanted to show you all these other things right now, and then I will get myself prepared and work on that because I need to work on it for something else. So these are chia seeds. Can you see them? You remember the chia pets that you wet them in? I never had one. You wet them and stick it on a clay form and then it grows little chias. Well, I'm not sprouting these. I'm actually soaking them though in water in a glass jar. And this is about, I think this was, oh my gosh. What is it, a cup of, see I can't remember. I've been changing the, I'm trying to figure out the best ratio of water to seeds. And I think at one point I was doing uh, half a cup to two, ta two tablespoons of chia seeds to a half a cup of water. So that might be what I have here, is one cup of water with four tablespoons of chia seeds. And I actually put them in the cat's food. I take a couple tablespoons out and mix up all their wet food and then give, that, give them this. Um, it's high in omega-3 fatty acids, which we were talking about last week, or last podcast. And the ratio between omega-3 and omega-6 is on the good side. So there's higher omega-3s than there are omega-6s. And what I really like about chia seeds is that they don't take up a lot of space. So you can actually take these with you if you're traveling 
and you know you're not really going to have a lot of good sources of food around you, you can just take these and you can keep them in your bag. You can just throw some in your salad if you're out somewhere having a salad just to get a little extra boost because you know we can't always control everything completely but we can enhance it. And I re just really like them. I mean, you know, they soak, they soak up really fast. So if you went to bed at night and, you know, had a little cup in your hotel or whatever and put water and filtered water in there and you could have some nutritious gel-like substance to stick in something else that you might be eating. Um, like, I don't know what else you might do with that in a hotel. But perhaps if you had a little refrigerator bar you could get some other things that you could add that to it maybe some fruit or some yogurt or something like that if you are a dairy person uh, I like I said I'm going to be making a pudding I will tell you how that comes out but basically it's uh, chia seeds and this much pudding or this much almond milk and um, I think they use chocolate but I don't really like chocolate I know I'm weird uh, I have I have cocoa nibs here that I could probably blend up but mm, not really in the mood for it um, I might put some vanilla and maybe some cardamom powder. Cardamom is really nice. And see what happens with that. I also have maple syrup here. So I might stick that in it because I think without it, it might be really, 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 really flat. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, we are going really fast now. I took an hour to tell you all this stuff before. Well, I had a review. Uh, hemp seeds. Oh, and the flax is not in here either. Okay. I tried grabbing everything, but that went back in the refrigerator. So let me, all right, let me talk about flax first. So the reason why, going back to this, one of the things that interested me with the smaller version was that it came with this milling blade, which means it could make, it could grind up things that were harder in order to make flowers. And I was like, wow, if it could grind up flax seeds, that would be fantastic because you can't eat them whole. You need to break them up. Our bodies can't digest them. And flax seeds are very good for their for you. And they're also high in omega-3s over omega-6s. It's kind of like walnuts. Remember we were talking about walnuts the other day, uh, the other day, a couple podcasts ago. And one of the great things about walnuts is that they're high in omega-3, low in omega-6. So that ratio is there. There aren't a whole lot of foods that have really high ratio like that, but there are some. And although we both we need both of these essential fatty acids because our body doesn't produce them, it's suggested that we eat more of the threes than the sixes. So um, anyway, so flax seeds. So I tried it with this. Does not come with a milling blade. This is what the blade looks like. And I'm gonna try not to get water and everything because I just washed it. So that's what the blade looks like. The milling blade does look different. And I was like, well, if they say it smashes up everything really good, why would you need a milling blade? And you know you don't. I put flax seeds in here. And you know how tiny they are? I wish I had them here to show you. But they're really tiny. And they smashed them up into a fine powder. It was crazy in like two seconds. So that's fantastic because the thing about flax seeds is that the, the flour, when you mill it, it goes rancid very quickly. They also do the seeds themselves. You want to store them in the refrigerator. And if you have flaxseed oil, you always want to store that in your refrigerator as well and use it up quickly by small amounts and just keep keep it rotated out. You don't want to have it sitting in there for over six months. So that's really great if you can throw some flax seeds in your, in your mix and know that you're actually getting the benefit of the flax seeds. So fantastic for that. One of the other things I tried and I've never had before are hemp hearts, which is hemp seeds, and they've just smashed them up. To me, they taste like sunflower seeds. These do not have the high ratio the other way of high three over six. They have it the other way around, but they still have other nutrients in them that are, are really good for you as well. So I thought I'd give it a shot, and they taste good. I throw them in the, the mix that I have in the morning um, to add some extra added fat because we do need fat. Um, fat is good for you. Fat is not evil. Um, low fat diets are not very healthy for anybody. <laughs> um, our brains run on fat and so when you deplete your your brain of fat that's just not a good idea. So uh, if you're interested in hemp hearts give them a shot. I put about two tablespoons in my beverage in the morning. I do a variety of things when I make my little beverage and it's really kind of fun. 
I don't like, they, it came with two books and I haven't used any of the recipes yet, but I do um, kind of stick to the formula of, I'll, I'll tell it to you, just in case you're curious. And you could, I'm sure you could use this for Vitamix as well. Just the idea of this, it's, it's kind of a good idea because it's the ratios as well. So on here is a little max line. You probably can't even see it at all now, but this is the max fill line for liquid. And what you do is you go half the distance from the bottom, and this is how much greens you stick in here. So leafy vegetables. I have um, spinach, Swiss chard. I haven't put kale in there because I'm not eating any raw kale, but I do eat kale. I just don't eat it raw. Um, spinach, Swiss chard, beet greens. So I buy my beets in the whole thing, and then I'll throw the green, the beet greens in there. Um, what else? Oh, arugula. Arugula is coming out right now. Uh, I live in the Northeast, and I'm not sure where they're getting it from, but obviously with the snow here, it's not coming from my local neighborhood, but it's, I think, local-ish, local-ish close. It's really lovely. I love arugula, and it's nice, bitter, astringent taste, and it's great for spring. It's one of my favorite greens of all times. And also what I'm trying new for me, because I'm trying, I'm trying new things. I'm trying the hemp seeds. I'm trying to incorporate the chia seeds. I'm just trying to figure out what I like, what I don't like, what was working well for my body, what isn't working well. So always keep that in mind that it's fun to try new things. Um, so where was I going with that? Oh, dandelion roots, d dandelion greens. So I've never had them before in my whole entire life. And I bought a, a little munch to see if I like them. And I've been making dandelion green tea, um, beverages the last couple of days. I just purchased some the other day. And it tastes good. Um, Ayurvedic I, the Ayurvedic philosophy of, of life has, um, goes along with the seasons. And I'm sorry, I'm totally not saying this how I did before. Anyway, during the winter, and depending on where you live, obviously if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you are not experiencing winter right now. And if you are along the equator, you are not experiencing snow. You are experiencing warm temperatures all throughout the year. So you're, the crops that you live in, that the crops that you live in, you don't live in crops. The crops that grow in your area are different than the crops that grow where I live. Um, so depending on where you live, the seasons and the diet shifts. And so eating with the seasons can be very valuable for your body because if you eat warm cooked foods in an environment where it's cold out, you will stay warmer. If you, which is another funny thing because I'm still craving salads and I'm like, why am I craving all these salads? And now I was concerned about having all the green drinks, drinks. am I going to, because it's all raw food, am I going to be getting any colder or feeling any colder? Um, I haven't noticed too much of a problem with it at all, but I tend to not eat raw until summertime, spring, summertime, and then I eat cooked foods fall, wintertime. It's just kind of the way my body has always enjoyed food. I like to just, I've always enjoyed eating with the seasons. Eating out of the seasons always felt kind of weird to me and the food was always, even though it's available, it's never, never really tasted the same because it felt like it shouldn't belong. You know, it's kind of like eating, um, what would I, like a traditional Thanksgiving dinner for Easter. Like they don't, they don't seem to go to me. <laughs> it's kind of backwards. So anyway, in Ayurvedic medicine and philosophy, if you have astringent greens in the spring, it kind of cleans you out from the hard, heavy um, foods, fatty foods, heavy foods of the winter that you that were available to you in that where you live. So, for example, um, right now winter squash is still available and anything in your root cellar is available. These are all heavy foods. The ones that can overwinter in your garden um, and typically maybe meats and fats. And so when the spring comes, then you clean all of that out with the astringent greens, the arugulas, the dandelion roots, and all the, the wild onions and things like that that are coming up, asparagus. And then your body will shift into the summertime when you have still eat lighter, but you're, you've clean, had that cleansing palate in between of the spring. So right now I'm kind of into the spring greens. I'm pushing it a little since it's still snowing here, but I will be where it's spring um, in another couple of weeks, three weeks, I guess, right? Less than three weeks, yay. <laughs> Very much excited to get there and I'm looking forward to 60 degree temperatures, yes. 
So what else did I want to tell you about this? So, okay. So once you fill your greens halfway, you can fill the rest almost up to the top because the blade, you can see the blade kind of comes down into that with vegetables and a little bit of fruit. And so I have organic celery that I love to put in there. I love celery in these juices. They're fantastic. It just, I feel so cleansed when I, when I eat them. I love celery. Um, please get organic on celery though. Um, what else do I put in there? A carrot. You can't fit a whole lot. So it depends on how much you chop it up to begin with, but usually one carrot, a couple pieces of celery, and then I'll throw some fruit on top. And I found a big, huge bags of organic pineapple. <laughs> it was fantastic. And it wasn't that expensive either, but if you buy it frozen, um, it's a lot less expensive. And I have strawberries, berries, um, black cherries. I found black cherries. I didn't even know they had black cherries. They were delicious. So just a little bit though, because it's just a little bit sweet, but if it were all like fruit, it would be massively, massively sweet. And you want to kind of keep it at a, a lower glycemic index. It will keep you more satiated that way. And also I put fat in here. I put coconut oil. Yes, coconut cream is what I have. And I will stick um, about two to three teaspoons of that in here. Between that and the hemp and the chia seeds, um, I'm getting lots of fat. And the liquid that I use is anything from water to coconut water to kefir to yogurt but watch out if you because the fruit is frozen you're not really technically supposed to be making frozen beverages in here like you can with a Vitamix oh that was the other thing I was going to talk about Vitamix if you have a Vitamix you can make things with hot or cold you can't really do that with this it's plastic Vitamix is made with metal I think they have two I think they have a metal one and a, and a plastic one and then the metal one definitely is the one that you can use for the hot and the cold. You really don't want to be putting hot liquids in plastic, even though this is BPA free. It's just not a good idea. Like I never store, I'm drinking. I never store anything in plastic stuff. Um, you can use glass in the freezer, you know, you just can't fill it all the way up to the top. You know, give some headspace for it to expand. Um, and especially please don't put anything hot into plastic and if you use a microwave which I don't um, don't use plastic in there because it just starts melting the plastic and it's permeating your food now so yeah I'm not a really big plastic fan I never have been and the movie trash just really completely solidified any ideas that I had about plastic so I am trying now to eliminate any type of unuseful plastic from me buying any and any unuseful plastic that I have in this house now needs to be reused like 50 zillion times before I can actually get rid of it and that's just what's going to happen and I'll keep you posted on that because it's difficult if you buy something that's plastic and it breaks it's like what do you do with it now it's not meant to last and then you throw it away and it never goes away so watch the movie um so anyway let me just talk about a couple other things if you're going to use frozen fruit um, I have hot water in the morning and so I just take a couple pieces of fruit out, stick it in a glass and then throw the hot water on top so that it can, um, it, it Pyrex glass because <laughs> I don't really want to be breaking china glass, like, you know, like not silverware stem glass, but anything but plastic because it's obviously the heat thing. And I let them, um, kind of defrost I'm like what's that word <laughs> I let it defrost while I'm having t I have two cups of hot water before I do anything in the morning and then I'll make the drink and I stick that on top with that water because it's already has the nutrients from the the fruit that was in there uh, you can use fresh fruit obviously that won't be a problem for the blades but if you use any type of yogurt or kefir or anything like that and, and you put a frozen piece of something in there the whole thing clogs and gets frozen and I used to do that with um, my mixer thing, so I know that. And I try. I don't want to break this. Basically, is what I'm saying. And it says you're not supposed to be putting ice in here or frozen things. So I'm trying to be very careful because I don't want to ruin it. Um, it was $130, and I don't really want to break something that I just bought. Because then, what am I going to do with it? Because remember, I need to. I need to reuse. <laughs> Um, so what else was I going to tell you about this thing? Gosh, we're going so fast now. Um, 
Okay, I can't think if there was anything else I was going to tell you about. Um, shoot, what was I going to tell you guys? Hold on, let me look at this. Because I did write notes, and you can see they're crumpled up because I crumpled them up and threw them away. We talked about chia seeds, we talked about that. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that one. Oh, okay, a couple more things here. I bought a Thai coconut the other day. And I didn't know how to open it, so I'm start bashing on the thing, and I'm like, this isn't working. Let me go scope out YouTube and see if there's a video. Sure enough, there was a video. So the girl's like, and you pull back the plastic, and you start cutting this. Don't take the plastic off because it's been dipped in formaldehyde. And I'm, now I'm freaking out. I'm like, are you serious? Now I'm, I have something that's contaminated here because I don't know if you know that formaldehyde's really not good for you. <laughs> Um, formaldehyde is also a nail polish as we've talked about that and you really don't want to be breathing that so please if you like to paint your nails pretty please find the nail polish that is formaldehyde free um, so I'm like oh my gosh now what am I gonna do <laughs> I don't want to dispose of it I don't even want to eat it now and I looked it up and it's not really done with formaldehyde it's done with something else and I've already forgotten the name methyl dye something or another but it's not as toxic and it's kind of just dipped in there and dipped out. The coconut is in a shell. The white part is the skin off, the outer skin. It has two skins. So you have the outer green skin, then you have the coconut white part, and then you have the, the hard coconut. And when it's not a young coconut anymore, that's the one you see in the store. That's the brown stuff and the three little things. And you pop in there and you take the stuff out, which is the coconut milk. But it tastes different then than it does now. And the flesh is different. On the dark one that you can buy, it's really thick, very thick, and it's very hard, and that's mostly what you're going to find when you buy um, coconut pieces or coconut um, flakes and stuff like that. It's that type. But the young ones, it's really soft. It's almost like moldable and kind of like looks like plastic in a way, but it's not. I mean, it's just, it comes off like in a whole big sheet, and it's just like mushy and everything like that. It tastes a little different. It's very good. Uh, the coconut water, I got a whole cup of coconut water out of that coconut, and it was so sweet. It was like really, really sweet. I couldn't just drink it plain. So I put half of it in my drink yesterday, and I put half of it in my drink today. Um, but I could see using that for a lot of different things, but definitely needed to be diluted because it was so sweet. <laughs> Probably would have gone good in the almond milk and the chia thing, but I didn't think about it um, as a sweetener. Um... So anyway, you scrape off all around the outside and go find a YouTube video. There, there's tons of people telling you how to do it, but it's so simple. So right where it does, it's, it looks like this. It's a, a little tube like this, and then it has a point on the top, like a little, a little point. And you cut off all around that point and expose the top of the coconut lid, and then you just hit it with the base of the, um, the knife not the top part of the blade, but just the base where it it, um, it levers. Like this is your handle, and I'm not even explaining that right. But anyway, if you <laughs> hit that, it kind of puts a crack in it, and then you can ply it open. And just really, really careful that you're upright when you do that. Otherwise, you will lose all the coconut water out of that. And I haven't done anything with the coconut meat inside except for smash it up. But there was a point when I had found this recipe for coconut whipped cream and I was going to share it with you, and then I couldn't make it happen, so I never shared it. And I'm kind of wondering what I can do with this. Actually, you know what, I might be able to put that in the, some of that in the pudding. Hmm, because that's sweet as well, and that might flavor that where I won't actually need to put sugar in there. Interesting, right? So the pluses about having, the, and I don't know how much that cost, I can't remember how much the cost of this coconut was. I have no idea. But I know coconut water is very expensive in the store. I bought it before, and you get like a little one, and it's like $5. And it comes in either a plastic bottle, or it comes in one of those pouches, those pla still kind of like a plasticky container. And now that you know, I watch this movie, I'm like, okay, well, how can I be more resourceful with not buying plastic? And that would be one way. If you want coconut milk, not milk, coconut water, this is the way to go. And I imagine that if you smashed up the meat and put it with water, I bet you that's how you can make coconut milk. Maybe that's how you do it. All right, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna research that and find out because that might be the way to make that um, coconut milk and then make the, the coconut cr 
cream and then you whip it to make whipped cream. I don't know. Well, I'll check it out for you, but um, another alternative to dairy for those who don't want to have dairy and you want to have still have something like a whipped cream. So what was I saying? Um, so anyway, so there's the plus of having the whole cup of coconut water, plus you get the meat. Whereas if you just buy the container, you're, you're getting just that container, plus now you have to throw it away and you have to do something with it. So win-win again, if you're going to have coconuts, try that yourself. It's not difficult and it's pretty tasty and it's fresh. I mean, you'll know when you open the coconut. Um, one of the ladies said if it's yellow or clear, then it's good. If it's turning pink, then don't drink it. And this was completely um, a clear liquid when I had it. And what else do I want to talk about? Okay, I wanted to talk about some comments on the group over on Ravelry. Um, Deb C. Quilt said it was okay for me to talk about this because you guys were interested in the paleo diet and she actually has participated and has been living that lifestyle for a couple of years now. So if you would like to read more about it, please go down to the Ravelry group and the threads and search for that. Um, various places with, that she's talked about it, but basically she, her husband, and her brother-in-law have all um, done the paleo diet and have really corrected some health issues. So lost a lot of weight as a consequence of that as well. So they're very happy with it. Um, like I said, you can try things and see what your body responds to. I mean, I am obviously not a meat eater, but I am starting to tend to shy away more from the grains these days. And I'm reading a book right now called Green Brain. by David Pellmutter, Dr. David Pellmutter. And this is very interesting. I'm only halfway through, I'm not all the way finished yet. And his, it, some of the, the information is very interesting on how grains, specifically certain carbohydrates affect our brain. I mean, we all know how things affect the rest of our parts of our body, but this is basically a study on the brain. And I found it to be very interesting because there was another doctor who was a lecturer at my school, and I can't remember his name, and he totally was talking about the brain and took um, images of the brain and compared to what you're eating, how you're eating, and how you can change that. And that's one of the things we're going to get into when we talk about meditation because you can actually make your brain better. Although I don't think he says so in here, but there there has been proof and proof by other people that you can actually reconnect things and create better health for your brain. But basically his premise is that carbohydrates and sugars specifically, um, like the bad, the bad sugars, uh, cause brain de deterioration, um, leading to Alzheimer's. So my mom had Alzheimer's and my dad had diabetes. And I know my dad's diabetes was caused by his eating because he ate a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sugar. <laughs> um, he had a little sugar craving, so did my mom. And so my mom didn't eat well, and she didn't have diabetes, but she also had, um, I would think, hypoglycemia. So he's basically stating there's a correlation between these things, and your brain health is also related to the, the blood sugar in your body. Um, I have not gotten to the recipe parts, but I will finish this by next time. I should be able to finish this by next time we talk and I'll give you a little bit of review about it. But obviously, you know, I don't really want to tell you what to eat. I just want to tell you what may or may not be good in what you eat, because when it comes down to it, it's your choice of what you put in your body. And I'm just here to kind of guide you along that if you're going to eat this, then this is probably the best part of that to eat. And I'm specifically talking about meat here because obviously I'm a vegetarian, but I've raised meat, uh, animals before. And the highest, best quality meat that you can buy if you are a meat eater, please do so and just eat less of it because you don't need as much as you think. He does proclaim a high, high protein, high fat diet, but there are vegetables out there that are really, really good for you and we need those nutrients as well. And so they are not high in the glycemic load, just the glycemic index. And I'm not sure if he makes that differentiation. I will know more as I read farther through this. 
Um, and always keep in mind that when we read these books, we're reading studies that people are compiling and putting, putting together that actually are, you know, promoting the thesis that they're trying to say. So I could put out a list of 10 books all promoting what they're trying to say and back it up with scientific evidence. That is because we're human beings and each human being is different. And so if you study and the way studies are done as well. So there's no study here on toxicity in XYZ or anything either. So we want to keep that in mind that these are just guides and it's information and it's good to know, but we also need to apply it to our life and our lifestyle and what works well for us and our beliefs. And, you know, obviously I don't believe in eating animals for me. Um, but if I did, I would definitely eat grass fed. I would make sure that it was organic and I would make sure it was local grown. So there are ways to find that information out. And also our portion sizes in the United States have blown out of control. And this is an iPhone. If you put two of these together, that's about the size portion of meat you should be eating in a sitting. That's it. That's all. But you never see that when you go out to eat. You see these big, huge, huge portions, and we really don't need all that. So anyway, those are my two cents on top of that, but this is a very interesting book. So if you are interested in reading about brain health, I would recommend it. Uh, it's not totally technical. I mean, there's a little bit of technical stuff in there. It kind of helps to know some of the jargon. Um, you know, I've taken anatomy and physiology, physiology classes, so there's a lot of that in here too, but it's, I would think, basic enough for anybody to understand. It's not totally exciting. <laughs> it's not like a page turner, <laughs> but it's interesting information if you're geeky, nerdy, and want to read about health. So I figured the other thing I'd like to do for you guys is to bring up some different books for you so that you can, you know, look at something else and just see how it applies to you. I mean, all we can do is just try, and I think it's really fun. I experiment on myself all the time. I'm constantly trying new things and seeing how it worked for me, if it gave me energy, if it didn't, if my body's responding in a certain way, what's going on. You know, I find it fun, you know. Life is an experiment. So I think that might be all I wanted to say. Let me just look again before I hang up. How far are we? 52 minutes. Okay. All right. Um, I won't tell you about that. Well, maybe I will. I'll tell you, Catalora, you know, cute little Catalora. Buddy was up here earlier saying hi to you guys, but obviously he's now laying over there and he's not here. But Catalora got injured this week, and I don't know what happened to her. Uh, she was sleeping Thursday and woke up and started limping, and I'm like, what the heck did that come from? You know, you were fine. You were just laying down. It wasn't like she was running and tearing across the house or anything. She was just laying there. So Friday came around, and she was still limping, but not as bad. But I'm like, okay, if she's still limping Saturday, I'll take her to the vet because my vet's open uh, seven days a week. So I called them up Saturday morning and um, got her in in a couple hours. And she wasn't really limping that bad. So I'm like, okay, maybe she's getting better. But they gave her, a sh they said, um, it's her shoulder actually, her, her left shoulder. They gave her um, a shot of anti-inflammatories and, uh, and arthritis medicine or something. I don't know what they did and exactly. I don't know what they gave her. They just took her away and said, here, we're giving her shots. And now she's limping worse than she was before. So I don't know. I don't know what she did. And they wanted me to give her a glucosamine, which is fine, except for the treats that it came in was full of garbage. Um, read the labels on your pet food too, people, because that can really be loaded with a bunch of crap. And I feed my cats organic feed cat food and no grain and I'm really trying to steer clear of anything that I think could harm them. I don't even feed them fish anymore. There's no fish in this house. All my fish eaters wound up being really sick and so I think there's something to um, the toxicity in fish that we're having these days and being transferred to maybe even smaller little bodies like our, our kitty cats um, who you know, are not as big as us and can tolerate, can tolerate less. And so, you know, I'm trying to do everything I can to keep them ha happy and healthy. But this whole thing is eluding me. I'm like, why the heck all of a sudden out of nowhere? So I don't think it's arthritis because you would, you would see that coming on. I mean, it's not like she's ever limped before. Never out of nowhere. So not sure what happened to my little kid. So keep her in your thoughts for me. I really want her to feel better soon to my little sweetie pie. 
So anyway, with that, thank you very much. We're under an hour. <laughs> Uh, I'll do the review and um, I'll try to get that up tomorrow as a separate piece because I need to get that, that back to the library as well. And that is it. Thank you very much. I will talk to you next week. Ciao.